final table is set. Everything's been going good. I can't complain at all. Hopefully I keep it up. <laughs> I think this will be quite different to the typical final table. A massive money bubble is about to burst. And as tensions reach their highest point. Look, buddy, it has nothing to do with you. Want, it's nonsense when you're breaking up for nothing. Why do you have to make this about you? Why? It's like, no, get over yourself. Thank your pardon for losing these spots, you know. It's just nonsense. The time to focus is now. Good end. Good luck, guys. Two dramatic bust outs brought us to the final eight. And before the night is over, just three will remain, and only one will claim the $6 million first place prize. This is the Super High Roller Bowl final table. I don't know if you played your money. I'm playing my money. Welcome back to the Super High Roller Bowl at Aria Resort and Casino, where a field of 56 bought in for $300,000 apiece just a few short days ago, and now we're down to eight. Not too much on the line, just a cool $6 million for first place. And some of the brightest minds in the poker world will be on full display today as we play down to three players. It's Ali Najad alongside Nick Shulman. And here they are, courtesy of Zynga Poker, Jake Schindler, four million in front of him. Christoph Vogel saying about 1.3 behind that figure. Byron Coverman in third. It's Jason Kuhn, though, on the short stack. Your pick to win it, Nick. What's he got to do? He's going to need a little luck, Ollie. Yeah, blinds at uh, 10 and 20,000 with a 20K ante are not exactly easy situation, a cheap poker for a stack like Kuhn's. With Kuhn being so short, you're going to see Schindler, Coverman, and Vogel saying apply a lot of pressure to the other stacks. The big stacks. And there's Leon Zukernik, owner of the King's Casino out there in the Czech Republic. And let's get a look at the payouts. Seven people are going to be happy. One will not. Eight players at the final table, and eighth pays zero. As we get a look at that breakdown, courtesy of Death Wish Coffee. Back down to the felt as the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl continues. Raised to 50,000 from Stefan Shalabal with two kings. To Kernick on the button with nope. Jack 10. That. Nice. Two fives have the muck from Nice lay down from Kuhn. Yeah, he doesn't really have enough yeah, chips to take a flop, and he's not really looking to jam two fives in this situation. So a good discipline lay down. One of his cards were exposed. I don't think players got to look at the second card. Yeah, I think uh could be mistaken. I think the five of hearts was exposed, which is not Schindler's friend nonetheless. Not enough necessarily to dissuade him independently. He'll certainly be taking a flop. Little does he know he's in a pretty unfortunate situation, although Shalabal's range here is fairly condensed. Did you say to unfortunate, a, Nick? What are you thinking? Queen, queen, that. deuce on this board as Schindler gins it. That's Jake Schindler, and this is a great spot for Shalabal to check, given just the nature of the of the bubble and, and a modicum of deception, I, I think. I think I would prefer to see Shalabal check here and just sort of perhaps induce and perhaps avoid some dicey situations. Right. For me, it's a little bit more of the latter than the former, given that his holding is so strong on this particular board that to bet opens the action up and potentially puts you in a bad spot as Schindler right. and it's, makes it's, the call. It's okay. I mean, it, it's not, not bad to throw a bet out there. I, I sort of thought... But you're up against Schindler. the chip leader. I Let's sort of, I sort of thought Schindler might check raise the flop as, as to just sort of balance his perhaps phantom wide splashy range that he may have in this situation. As Shalop elects to check the turn, these players are playing very precise, very surgical, really grinding every last chip. I may be overstating or or not quite addressing the nature of this situation properly as not quite as dramatic as as it sounds they still have quite a few chips it's still very deep stack no limit it's not like schindler is just going to be jamming on everybody there's a lot that will happen 
in, until that. A lot of chips need to go into the pot. Both players check the turn. 200K in the middle. Shalabal here, of course, will call. And Schindler betting 155, and Stefan just forced to call and get a look at some nice. pretty salty run nice. bad right there. Wow. That's right. Well, Jake needed the help, Nick. You know, he's, he's nursing that short stack. <laughs> Just continues to compile <laughs> as we get a look at a A to A poker three of a kind moment there. And you know, you and I both know it's taking nothing away from the talent of any of these players who manage to amass chips, but it's suffice it to say, not simply a 100% product of skill, a pot like that. Certainly, there's the the matter of maximizing your earn in a given hand, but making a hand like that in a spot like that, there's some run good associated with winning one of these things. There's no doubt about it. Well, that's absolutely luck. right, of course, of course. I accept that, I accept that. Ace Jack for Budiga, makes it 50 to go. Budiga with 5.3 million in career tournament earnings. Incredibly deep stacked final table is Kuhn. This is what he's been waiting for on the short stack. How is he going to approach it? Kuhn's shipping it in there, and Ace Jack doesn't look quite so good anymore. Ace Jack just shrunk up a little. Ollie. Yeah, it did. Facing, uh, and hit the muck pretty quick, by the way. 6.30 was the total. And they're hooting and hollering out there in West Virginia. No doubt about it, rooting for their man. Welcome back to Final Table Action from Aria. Let's head down to our sideline correspondent, Maria Ho. Maria, what do you got? Thanks, Ali. I spoke to chip leader Jake Schindler before play started, and he told me that it's been a bit of a rough road getting to this final table today. He said that on day one, he was able to amass a pretty good chip stack, but on day two, he ran into a couple of coolers and actually got kings against aces, but didn't go broke. He managed to recover on day three, and now he finds himself in a commanding position. He says he expects to play well under pressure and that he's gonna do what he came here to do, which is win. Schindler calling his shot, Ali. Poker Go is the platform that poker fans have been waiting for, and now there really is a single stop for everything live poker. And it's all on PokerGo.com. It is a cool stat. Elects to limp in the hijack. Knocked around to Coverman. Coverman simply asking himself what exactly is Kuhn's limping range. Something like 4x, profitable, lets it go. But he always thinks things through, which I love about him. As a player, I think it's... I think not only is it an important attribute, but it just just makes the other players a little uncomfortable. Nobody, when, when somebody doesn't do things instantly ever, you know every time you're in a pot with them, you're in it sort of for the long haul, so mm -hmm. to speak. And interestingly enough, Pratush Budiga, who earlier, just a few hands ago, folded ace-nine suited against the early position raise of Jake Schindler, who is the big stack, now electing to limp behind the short stack limp of Jason Kuhn. A far well. different situation. Right. Schindler raising early, Budiga to the left of him, and, and also relatively early position versus just this this limp from Kuhn. Ace both. nine suited, a nice spot to take a flop on the button. Both blinds along for the ride on the queen eight three flop. Jason Kuhn is flop top pair with a better kicker than Justin Bonomo, and the action is and on him. And Jason certainly uh, tricky enough to be 
somewhat balanced and, and have a, a slightly unpredictable range, but he does have quite a bit of queen jack and queen 10 suited in his range. So in this particular situation, in this particular yeah. situation, this cutoff limp, you kind of start thinking 10 jack suited, queen jack suited, these okay. hands that want to take a flop don't really want to raise in this situation. And a really innocent looking deuce hits the turn. Bonomo with top pair checking a second time after having flat called. And again, that ever fine line of the, the desire to get value and also to preserve your position and not overextend, so. A uh, function of another, the two checks on the turn as the board another, pairs the river. Yeah, and like Kuhn can hero it off for sure. He's a great player, but another spot where like Kuhn just doesn't really have any threes in his range. And like, I just want to jam. But <laughs> Bonomo checks, and I do think that Kuhn should bet. Clo it's close close given the situation but I do think you have to hunt for some value and uh, and the hunt is on to the tune of 80k not the most fun spot for Justin Bonobo right. by any means as right. Kuhn really does not have Queen 9 ever and is he bluffing sitting on this short stack with the bubble as big as it is you know is, is Kuhn, Kuhn could it be an 8 he has some, I don't think it could be an eight in right. this situation. Which is a problem for Justin first, facing the bet. First could it he be doesn't a bluff have or many eight? eights. I think his ace eights he's going to raise or, or fold. His ace eight suited, he'll raise. And you pay it off, but you don't like it. And versus Coon's range, it's a pretty gross spot, but hot odds warranted a call in Bonomo's mind. And Jason Coon has sort of put himself uh, right back in the hunt. He has about 50 bigs now. And, and he's Jason Kuhn, so that's an awful lot, Ali. We'll return for more of the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl after this. Welcome back to the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl here on NBC Sportsnet. And do not adjust your screen, ladies and gentlemen. It's Pocket Eights, brought to you by 888-POKER. We're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna get those numbers one day, and uh. I will be validated, Ali. It, I mean, should we set an over/under on the number of times pocket eights have shown up? Soft Where would it be? Where would you have it? A dozen? No, 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 more. Over? More. Oh yeah. I mean, in the 30s, Ali. Wow. Oh, Ace wow, nine is... eight to all diamonds on this board, and this is trouble. Straight no. flush draw, redraw for Byron Coverman, who's got the queen high flush and bottom set for Budiga. And Byron has Budiga covered here as he checks and lights this fuse. What an intense situation as Budiga flops bottom set. Byron 80, with the second nuts, a, a draw to the stone cold nuts. 80,000. And that ever so present uh, it, stack differential and situation where, although it would be a Tremendous hit to Byron were he to somehow get doubled through versus Budiga. He does have enough chips to get out there and apply pressure in some murky spots, so. Oh, a pair on the board on the turn, and now it's one out to make the best hand for Byron. That's right, and, and with the board pairing and knowing that you are condensing Budiga's range to a very narrow window if, if Byron were to check raise, I believe we will see Byron check and call here. Barring a, a ace or a... If Byron were to check and raise, we would see Byron call? I didn't follow. Yeah, no, 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 nobody followed that because it didn't make <laughs> any sense. But I was a little surprised to see Budiga check the turn back. Um, this could be a very interesting river. Let's just see how it plays out. I think Coverman almost certainly will bet for value. You know, it wasn't that long ago in the game when there certainly would have been fireworks okay. on the turn. But now the well, game has sort of evolved a little bit. It's not just that. It's that it's that Byron has some of those straight and flush draw kind of combinations that Budiga wants to allow to get there. And Byron's leading out for 95,000. Budiga is so rarely betting his, his ace X on the turn that he's balancing that out with these eights full. But what an annoying spot this is going to be for uh, Coverman. Ten seconds. The raise is sure to come in, but to what amount? Probably quite big. 
time has been extended. I think about 3x this bet or more because it's it's a spot where you are representing having it or not having it. I think he will size an amount that he polarizes his range. Yeah, this is a very polarizing kind of situation as players are not getting ultra cute here on the end with the jack 10 of diamonds or whatever it is. Obviously, Coverman has a 10 of diamonds, but he's he's sort of repping a boat. Or not too much. He might choose a hand that has an ace in it, certainly to make that play. But raise to three hundred thousand. This is gross if you're Byron. Yeah, that's kind of his gross face. He <laughs> might fold, but the way he grabbed his cards, if he just insta folded, I was taking my headset out and uh, walking out of the booth because I just wouldn't be able to take how how good that would be. Right. But now this is an uncomfortable spot because you hold the queen and the ten of diamonds in your hand. There's only one flush that beats you. And on this paired board, what on earth could Budiga, given the context Frankly, of the money bubble in Kuhn's short stack, be willing to sail off with here? Yeah, hopefully not skewed by simply seeing the whole cards up here in the booth. But frankly, it really looks like Budiga has eights full, quad nines, aces full, some ace nine. I mean... This looks really it looks strong. Like, it looks like Queen Ten of Diamonds is probably not good. That's right. That's the That's more right. important. There's also some six six for Budiga. You sure, six six. Boy. Yeah. King Queen with the King of Diamonds. I mean, just a naked King Queen. Suited to me? nines. That that. Like yeah, a dry I mean, King. I was trying to to wonder what Budiga's bluffs might be. Some of his nine combinations would elect to just sort of bluff catch on the end. I mean, it's fun to try to decide what hands he would do this with, but the truth is he may not have too many bluffs in this situation. And oh. Overman does pay it off. It's just one of these annoying spots. He's probably a little bit disappointed with himself or agitated, but and you also owe one time. it's a tough spot. I don't know if Budiga's bluffing that river with certain combinations. I don't know how often he is, if ever. I mean, certainly a player like this is capable of anything, but standard hands take on a much more exciting feel to them when you're on the direct bubble. We'll return to Aria Resort and Casino in a moment. Welcome back to the beautiful Aria Resort and Casino here at City Center in Las Vegas. Well, let's get back to the action here, 40, where we find a hand in progress. As we see Tsukernik checking with his ace-10 over to the unclear holding of Bonomo, who puts out a small continuation bet. 40,000 the figure, and Leon makes the call. There are certainly some combinations that Bonomo might wind up barreling turns with. And that turn is a queen of clubs is sort of a barrelly kind of turn. Bonomo has something like Jack-10 or King-Jack or King-10. We might see him bet again. Try to take this one down, but he does check. So no action on the turn, and the queen pairs on the river. Not the best river for Tsukernik, as Bonomo does have some queen-x that he would play like this, but... Defensive bet of 50,000 with the ace 10. Sukernik still goes for some value, some defense, all rolled into one. I wonder if Bonomo takes some blockers and ever bluffs here, or if he does simply have this queen, or. Well, Leon certainly doesn't rate to have any queens given the Leon way the hand has is played four, out. Six. Leon has some 6 8, some 8 9. Impossible for it. And, I, I think, and Leon's got some problems. I think Leon is going to pay this one off. I'm not saying he should or shouldn't, but as as we're in the very exciting driver's seat of not seeing Bonomo's hand. Well, let's talk about Bonomo's holding before we address Leon having to call this quarter million. Is this a an ace that hasn't beat ever, or is well, this just air looking to bully? Bonomo has... The queens, as you said, he has you the think? queen X. And no, I'm not saying he has okay. it, but from a range standpoint, he has more queens than Leon. And it does get through. Let's see oh, if Bonomo has it or not. Don't let his hand hit the muck. 
Bonomo has some bluffs here for sure, but he the does queen. have the queen nine. Maybe he has no bluffs. The uh, the ever creative sucker up here, always hoping for glory. Bonomo just had it. And that nice lay down, Leon. That Sukernik 50k test again yeah. coming back positive. As we get a look at their stacks, and Vogel saying just about 750k there it looks like behind Jake Schindler, Ratush Budiga in third, and uh, Shillable, Bonomo, and Kuhn all down there in that millionish range. Tush Budigo with two jacks makes it 65k to go. You know, Stefan Schalabel is very close with uh, the other German players, including Dominic Nietzsche, Reiner Kempe, Christian Christner. Of course, Reiner and Christian, his roommates. Rai Aldemir and Stefan Sontheimer, also friends of his. And a lot of talent coming out of the Deutschland. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it speaks speaks volumes to their approach, the collective community of poker advancement. And just having uh, multiple friends who are top players never hurts, of course. As they go back home, they certainly revisit scenarios of the day and go through hands. As Vogel sang, three bets, Budiga, suited ace in position. And Budiga certainly not going to muck his hand as Leon lets go of the suited connector. But this raise amount does present an interesting situation as Budiga has Vogel saying covered here and is incredibly strong despite being a late opener. Or is he up front? Uh, he might be early here. Nevertheless, seconds. not looking like a four bet. No, there will be no four betting this one at this stack depth. Budiga taking a flop. And certainly not with the zero versus 600K <laughs> difference between eighth and seventh. Yeah. That's right, and a, and a, a interesting very, flop. A very spicy flop for our perusal as Budiga with the over pair. Vogel Sang with the nut flush draw. Over half a million in the middle, and almost certainly will be adding to that figure. One hundred forty thousand. will only call here, although jacks are good. A very large portion of the time, the range of hands that you start to force Vogelsang to proceed with when you raise is not the best for you in this situation. Yeah. And of course, with three stacks hovering around a million. Right, looming in the balance, and and you're right about that. The, the check raise really narrows the number of possible hands that can proceed that don't have two jacks and and potential trouble. Yeah. As Budiga does make the call and the five rolls off on the turn and a rather quick check there from Pratouche. A rather quick check from Pratouche and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Vogelsang fire a pretty healthy bet here with this just variety of outs that he has at his disposal, a six. A deuce happens to be good, of course, all those hearts, and an ace, so when you throw fold equity into the equation and you have all these outs, it makes a lot of sense to continue betting. Yep. Diga here, as we know, quite strong. Is it 18 outs for uh, Vogel Singh's hand right now? Got three aces, three deuces, three sixes, and all the hearts. Except for, of course, the Jack of Hearts, which we see. Ten Diga does continue. Oh. Potentially interesting river scenarios Look here, Ali. Look at the Ali, size of this pot, Nick. 1.6 million yeah. in the board pairs on the river. You hate to give up a massive there. pot like this, but do you really want to risk 
losing even more if you're Kristoff after well, Perdush shows, shows all this stickiness. Well, Perdush's range is, is fairly face up here. It could could extend as wide as nines or eights, but Pertouche clearly has a pair of some sort. Because you've got the nut flush draw, so that's you right. Know that's not in his range. And Christoph does shut it down wisely, I believe. I mean, of course, a massive bet might have gotten it done, but it's not so easy to pull the trigger with that. And I think it's a well played hand by both players. That's where we need Bryn Kenny at the controls. We need Bryn Kenny out there to take down to the streets and just just right. uh, just jam it in there on the, the end. I mean, the he's savagery, capable, yeah. you know. Even Bryn might. Might shut that particular river down, just given how strong Pertouche looked and the nature of the situation. We'll return for more of the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl after this. Welcome back to the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl at Aria Resort and Casino. And let's send it down to Maria Ho. Thanks, Ali. You know, on day one of a $300,000 buy-in, it's all fun and games, and all these players are happy and willing to talk to me on their breaks. But as this money bubble continues, it has been increasingly more difficult for me to get anybody to talk to me. They seem to be very, very focused, and they seem intent on just keeping to themselves on the break. I think that might change when the bubble bursts, but we'll see. The only information I have been able to gather is that a lot of these players have played against each other in high stakes events, so they feel fairly comfortable in this situation. Thanks, Maria, and our apologies that you're having so much trouble getting people to talk to you. I mean, you're welcome to come into the booth. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to anybody that finds their way in here. Everybody needs to relax, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we all just get along? We should send some cookies out there. They've been doing wonders for us. Perhaps Maria Ho, who has taken our invitation to, to join us here in the booth, would these players would are look too, to take some cookies out there. These players are so tense, they can't even talk to the lovely Maria Ho right now. Everybody's falling apart on the bubble, Ali. This is a lot of pressure out there. I mean, it is. I can only imagine what the exit interview is going to feel like for you, Maria, who is sitting here with us, unfortunately, on mic. I don't envy mic. that task. It really depends who it is. Some Good will take that better luck than with a, that there, one. There may be no interview for the, uh, for the bubble boy. I say you chase them down the hallway if they just try to jet off. Go, Maria. You make sure to get that interview. Right? Please just slow down just uh, one moment, please. So how do you feel right now uh, bubbling? What right. is it? It's like a corrupt politician expose. <laughs> You're just the mic in, the, in their face right. on Capitol Hill. You got to be careful out. nowadays. That dude in uh, Montana or whatever, he body slammed that guy. Oh, that's right. Don't was get body Montana slammed. Or why? I don't remember yeah, where that was. And but by man. the way, he still won the election, may have actually pushed him over. <laughs> you, know? you know, people like to see that strength uh, in their leaders. Yeah. <laughs> Raise 80,000. Diga so. has made it 80,000 under the gun, as he did, I believe, last time. Schindler certainly will be getting involved, but first he tries to read the soul of young Pratush Budiga. Yeah, he's kind of a, a starish kind of guy. He, he's, you know? a he's a, he's a, he's a starer. Listen, he plays a lot of live cash, and uh, getting live reads is a big part of that, so it's a big part of his game. As he also keeps his hand perched upon his, uh, his neck pulse as to not reveal perhaps post-flop excitement as Coverman bows out again out of the big blind, a spot that I know he is dying to get involved because he sure. really really knows what's going on post-flop, but respecting the situation. Sure. 
And the flop is queen 6-6. Six, six. One over card to Schindler's sevens. Cracks a little smile, Schindler. And it looks like Budiga's giving us a sneak peek of uh, wow. that's the a good pretty, one. That's a pretty good uh, good start for Budiga. <laughs> yeah, right. Free rolling for the six or the queen. And he's just going to check behind Schindler and make a full house on the turn. No, that's right, Schindler. Now with uh, no outs. Yeah, he's in the business of sort of sort of checking and uh, kind of hoping a little bit, Ali. Of course, sevens are good here quite a lot. Although Pratt is not opening under the gun that liberally, even given his chip stack. Pratouche protecting his very, very large checking range by also checking with a lot of his dynamite hands, as we see. Trying to grind young Schindler out for one street of value. Well, he seems to have induced this river bet from Jake. Yes, he has. There's some uh, some of the King Jack, Jack 10 suited varieties, some of these deuces, threes and fives that Schindler would be perhaps turning into bluffs and hoping to get some value from ace high. I think this might be a smidge thin here. I'm not in love with this lead, but it's okay. As we see, Budiga has the queen of spades. But... <laughs> Reveal the bad news to Jake after he thinks this through and and raises and he calls. Just calls. Just calls. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, uh, it did look a lot like quads, so we <laughs> understand. Uh, honestly, like even a min raise or maybe a, an overbet of some sort, you know. I'm just going to leave. Raise. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. That's because, the second uh, question mark, right. by the way, we've there, had. There, there is not the the way players are playing versus each other in these situations. Especially Budiga infers that he simply does not think some of these players give him any any sort of bluffing range in these spots, and they're just not calling with worse, so what's the point? We'll return to Aria Resort and Casino in a moment. Welcome back to the desert for more high stakes poker action. It's the Super High Roller Bowl. As we get a look at our current chip counts, Budiga with that chip lead, almost five milli. I don't really, uh, I, I don't know, Ali. Let's raise these full houses, Pratt. I mean, uh, it's, you know. How bad can it be? Pratt, it's, it's, it, I find it hard pressed to believe that, uh, that that raise is bad. And just because you have such a command of the situation and understand what's going on, Perhaps you're checking back to only get that one street of value, and yeah, Schindler is going to fold anyway. Maybe I get. I guess that's preordained that if you raise there, Schindler just automatically releases. Let's just even assume that's the case, and that it is worse to raise because you either run into four sixes or he folds everything else. I still got to jack it up. It just looks a little odd, and man, I. I, I I don't know. Well, would you like to know what the probability of flopping quads against when holding a pocket, a pocket pair, what the holding odds are? Holding a pocket are. pair. What's holding a pocket a, pair? I, I'm what are so we, what discombobulated are you? <laughs> by the check behind from the Netherlands that I'm or something. Yeah. This is a pocket pair. <laughs> so the odds of your opponent flopping quads when holding a pocket pair. Uh -huh. Do you know it off the top of your head? I do, but I'll, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you reveal it to the audience. This is actually one that I oddly know. No, you know I don't know what the odds are of flopping quads. Four hundred and seven to one. Point two five percent of the time is. Pratusha's hand beat there, according to the interweb. 407 to 1. Oh, you I feel like you're like hitting it, it a little more often than that there, uh, I feel Shulman. like I'm hitting it less. I haven't flopped quads <laughs> since I was 17. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when you think about the, the improbability of it, wouldn't it feel correct to have raised there? Well, it, yeah, just raise it up. We're on TV here, you know. It, it's... Uh, it's yeah, we know what's going on. I mean, uh, you know, I, listen, everybody has the right to play the way they play and approach the game the way they approach it. 
I don't know, it just sort of doesn't look right. Um, you can't be too old fashioned and, and ask players to do things that have been solved as incorrect or, or as poker has progressed, we have learned are, are wrong. And we kid, and we make fun of the fact that as players have improved, the game in ways has has gotten a bit duller in certain spots to the to the layman. To me, I love this stuff, I really do. As much as I joke, I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated by small blind and big blind scenarios, more than I even let on sometimes. We find a bet and call of 140,000 on the turn where the flop came 10 4 8. A king peeled off, and now the top card on the flop is paired on the end in the form of a 10 of hearts. 490,000 in the middle, and of course. we're facing a couple of mysteries. Five sixty left behind for Bonomo. This is, in ways, the most important hand of the day thus far, as Bonomo, with about a pot-sized bet left, certainly a situation where we could see Budiga pile with both value and and some air. Let's just see how it plays out. And Budiga's going to put Bonomo all in here. Oh, and the ace jack of diamonds for Bonomo, picking up a lot of outs on the turn and just breaking off on the end. Does he really want to take a stand for well, his tournament life with ace high? Well, Bonomo, of course, with with just a bluff catcher here, and no, he doesn't. Budiga will have some missed draws here. But oh, seven, eight of diamonds. He happened to have a pair, but if the diamond peels off, Bonomo could potentially double through yeah. there. Yeah. There are times where Budiga folds out a slightly better hand than those tens and eights, and there are other times where those tens and eights are good. So nice jam by Budiga. Pretty frustrating day so far for the great Justin Bonomo, whose stack is really dwindled and now the remaining yeah. players really sort of uh waiting on him to get involved and potentially be our our bubble boy and we'll return for more of the 2017 super high roller bowl after this Schindler makes it 90 under the gun, and once again, Coverman finds himself in a spot that, under normal circumstances, he might call, he might three bet. Look who he's stuck between Jake Schindler and Pratush Budiga. Stuck between Schindler and Pratush Budiga, and really his hands are somewhat tied in this situation, given the chip stack of Bonomo, Shalabal, and Kuhn. And that's certainly one of the areas where irrefutably some luck plays into things. It's the oh, draw course. at the, at the final table. What seat did I get? You Absolutely. Know? Does these things certainly matter? What the stack sizes are behind you and in front of you or where the amateurs may lie? Who's picking on your blinds? That's right. Things Sugar of this Man nature. gets out of there with a suited connector. I think everyone's situationally Kuhn, aware here. Kuhn defends the big, I'm pretty sure. Bonomo and Shalabal are, of course, watching intently. And the flop. King, 10, 8, rainbow. We know not what either player holds, simply that Schindler was the open raiser, and Kuhn defended. Jason has checked it over to Jake, who is going to continue to the tune of 75,000. Into the pot of 230. 
Hey. And I think Thanks it's a call. snap call from Schindler here. Might see some straight draws from Kuhn. Well, it's a bottom set for Jake Schindler. On the pair of eights, by the way. You do see a straight draw for Kuhn, which makes a lot of sense. 7-9. And Bonomo, the first man over there to root against Kuhn. No, that doesn't appear to be the case, but... The hovering over them is a bit odd, but they're all good friends. It's been fun around either way, boys. I prefer to get there and be a pain in your <laughs> but sometimes you don't get to. It's hard not to like Jason Cohn. That is the truth. Kind of, you kind of root for him here, you know. It was. It's a lot the pain of the money bubble looming of over him. And it's hard not to root for him, especially given how many chips Schindler has, that he'll he'll be okay. And right. Can Jason Kuhn hit a six or a jack to complete a straight, make the best hand, and stay alive, or will he be the dreaded eighth-place finisher? That'll it's do the it. latter. As wow. the deuce rolls off, and your pick to win it, Nick Shulman. He definitely, uh, he definitely made me and a lot of people proud with his stellar play as always. Yep. Tough to bubble. Tough day for him. As and by the way, the stacks became close. You know, he was short, but then, then he was right in there. He even moved into seventh and sixth and back down. So man, credit to Jason Kuhn. I mean, how sporting is his? Attitude toward, don't forget the Tupperware. How sporting is his attitude toward everyone, you know, Jason after? Jason is the man. He can take it, out. win or lose. Where's he going? He'll be back. That's a good point. I made a big fold. I could have played. A collective sigh of relief appears to have taken root at the table, understandably, as we've broken the money bubble and we'll shift everyone around. But first, Let's head down to Maria Ho, who's standing by with Jason Kuhn. Jason, this was a $600,000 bubble. Yeah. How painful is it right now? It's poker. Um, honestly, I, I don't feel any pain whatsoever. Uh, I was the short stack coming in. I was lucky enough to have a really big sweat to not bubble. I think I moved up two places at one point in time and then uh, just a lot of stuff happened. Um, I didn't make a hand, the other short stacks did, and um, that was that. Uh, really, you know, yeah, it's, it's the biggest tournament uh, that I'll play all year, and uh, to bubble is unfortunate, but at the same time, it's like, I did the best I could, and um, it was a pretty easy day for me, fortunately. I, I wasn't really, I didn't have any uh, hard decisions to make. Played the best that I could, given how handcuffed I was. You seem to have a lot of support, not only from all of your friends who are, you know, some of poker's best, but also your girlfriend yeah. has been here. And so I think that's a great consolation either way, right? Yeah, it's I'm going to play lots of big tournaments in my life and I'm going to bubble lots more and I'm going to win a few, hopefully. And that's just the way that it goes. Um, all these guys deserve to make the money and uh, hopefully I'll get in there next time. Well, good game. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as many impressive plays as we saw out of Jason Kuhn throughout the event, including some notable bluffs, I'd say his biggest bluff came after the bust out, saying he doesn't feel any pain whatsoever. Can that possibly be true? For Nick Shulman, I'm Ali Najad saying good night from Vegas. Join us next time for more of the 2017 Super High Roller Bowl here on NBC Sports Network.